Hello, Suna. It's so great to have you here today. How are you? Fine, Ludmilla. Good seeing you. <laughs> um, so we decided to do this video together. Uh, Suna had this idea, actually, and I was on board with it, to do this video for the World Regression Week. Suna, I'll let you maybe talk more about the insights that you had and what led you to this decision. Yeah, it just was something that came to me that I should um, do something together with you for um, the regression week. And uh, I've sensed this before when we worked together, when we were in Portugal, uh, that we should do some work together. And it's interesting because uh, you then told me that you had the same mm -hmm. idea. Or, yeah, so it, this, this is happening with us a lot, that we're getting exactly the same idea. And um, so I, I just going with the flow. As we should, right? <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for reaching out. And you decided to, um, to connect with Hathor, Isis lineage, the lineage of Divine Mothers. Why did yeah. you feel this would be the right timing to receive messages from them? Well, they're very connected to Mother Earth. In fact, I, I, very, I much feel that they are, have merged with Mother Gaia. And uh, I've been spending a lot of time hiking out in the woods and nature uh, and uh, really connecting with, um, with Mother Earth. And, uh, and hearing messages directly into my heart. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just one of the many options of things to do, in a way. Um, I think that before we go on, we should introduce ourselves to everybody out here. That would right? be very good. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Go ahead. So okay. Please tell us more about the work you do and where we can find you. Okay. So just like you, Ludmilla, I studied the Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnotherapy with Candice Craw-Goldman. Uh, I believe you were one of the very first students, and I was probably in the second round. round. And then um, I've, uh, I, I can just tell, me, tell you my background is I worked in psychotherapy for decades. Uh, I kind of left it. Uh, directly when I was um, working with uh, very difficult diagnoses and patients. And I just kind of dawned on me that I'm not doing much on this end of the spec, you know, the end of a person's life when they've already created so many traumas and distortions in their life that everything is a constant uh, crisis. So I then decided to uh, really look at what it is to grow strong and healthy, you know? Uh, so I started with an early childhood development program that I formulated and I pitched it to some preschools and then I um, worked with it for 16 years in the community of Chappaqua, New York, which is right outside, it's a suburb of New York City. And um, from that, I developed uh, healthy uh, programs of healthy habits early, physically, mentally, emotionally, and socially. So I have uh, one of, one of, I have one children's book that mm -hmm. I've done from this. And there's many that can be done as well. But I even worked with parenting programs and such. I'm just really interested in, um, yeah, supporting our original development. And I even had a nonprofit, um, still have it but it's in the states so i'm not as active with it at, at this point called uh um, world foundation for original human development and it's just i think i've just wanted to go deeper and deeper and deeper and meeting the beyond quantum healing hypnotherapy uh was a way to really go um deep with people very quickly it's uh it's worth several months or years of psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. mm -hmm. it's empowering because you hear the advice and the guidance from yourself. Yeah. Uh, and I just facilitate. 
and I've, I loved, I moved into that facilitator position. Uh, even in my own work, I called myself a life transformation facilitator. Now I call myself a quantum transformation facilitator. It is and quantum. <laughs> it is. It is. It's all that so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, so my, my private practice I've had for at least 10 years now, uh, but more as a facilitator than is the classic mental health. Um, it gives me a good background, but I don't subscribe to focusing on uh, problems or diagnosis or what, you know, I, I focus on the joy, what brings you joy. Mm -hmm. So I do have a website, which is my name, Suna, S-U-N-A, at sunasenman.com. And we can write that in lower. We will write that, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and then I have a Patreon, mm -hmm. which is also Patreon slash my name, Suna Senman, uh, which I call Being Peaceful. That's based on the other books that I've writ written. And that I just offer healthy habits, you know, meditations, um, uh, insights to ponder on, uh, also um, yoga, heart yoga. Mm -hmm. I started heart yoga this past year. And um, my, my role or my place, I think, is just to facilitate the blossoming of beautiful human beings, you know. And so I, my style is very um, just kind of reflective, helping to draw out the wisdom from within the person. Um, and, and, you know, very kind of, quiet behind the scenes in a sense yeah. so yeah but now very energy right <laughs> yeah i think so i i really connect with that right yeah. working behind the scenes before we move to our session we were talking about this experience that you had with your friends and which led us to this beautiful discussion about how this technique beyond quantum healing is allowing us to expand and explore beyond our understanding and yeah. beyond our expectations. So maybe if you can share with us this story with a friend of yours, how you used hypnosis for him to explore. Yes. So I had worked with him in um, just a classical uh, lay down, relax, regression. And um, he's, he is an artist at heart. And he always, he's a very good artist. He did the, this is one of his paintings that's behind me. Mm -hmm. And that's from a long time ago, maybe three, four decades ago. And um, he uh, accessed within this first quantum healing session that he has had other lifetimes uh, and his purpose is to really show the light through um, art. And then I just got this inspiration yesterday that um, I need to do a session with him where he just puts a blank uh, sheet of watercolor paper up and draws his expression. And it was fantastic and he also it was different than anything he'd done before and he just felt like i need to do more of this now but it was also what was coming out was in the first session he had had some visions of paintings that he needed to do and it started it came out in this session as well so um the beyond quantum healing hypnotherapy can be uh, catalyst for accessing art works music anything perhaps even uh scientific inventions what are you know about? now because yeah. all the artists scientists like nikola tesla they were all saying that they were receiving this information from somewhere else so they were downloads and they they were in this altered state hypnosis right when they were able to receive this information. So definitely we are not done exploring this technique. And uh, yeah, it's quite fascinating. I think how things can unravel in the future. We're not even 
aware of how things will develop. Because I think we're basically removing the blocks is what it is. And because that uh, it's in us already that those divine skills and qualities and with this technique, we help remove the blocks. Um, and I think even clients or myself, even when I had my session, I realized like, oh, I can access my divine self anytime I want. Yes. I, you know, I, so it, it really is empowering. It is. Yeah. Would you like to um, share with us maybe some other t techniques that you're um, using, you're merging in your sessions? Yeah, I think when I approach my sessions, it's like I've, I've done all through my career, even working with very difficult, um, like eating disorders, patients and, and such. I always feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. I, I feel like I'm, I'm really like open and, and that, um, I mean, I know I have skills and techniques, but I don't know what's going to come forth. So I'm very open and I've had, um, I've had every session that I've done, it's been so unique. I've had clients that went back to really identifying themselves as, as elements. Like mm -hmm. I had a client that identified herself as water and she had come to me with the, the issue of like, I just don't know where I, I fit in life or what I should be doing or what, you know, she's trying to find this like kind of solid placement for herself. And then after she realized that she's water, she's exactly doing what she's meant to do. Right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Staying in place. In place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I have had another, um, um, like when we were talking about even scientific in inventions and stuff, one of my clients was given um, directions from Ashtar, a, command and the galactic to uh, set up a program for a uh, new governmental system. And um, he's, he's been working on it. He was aware of it. He was working on it. And then in the session, he got more insight to it. Um, Beautiful. So, there's so many different things. Uh, and you know, the way I see it also is that by connecting to this, mm, universal hard drive i don't know how to call it yeah. we can really speed up the process and like jump you know stages in our awakening whatever you want to call it maybe right. we don't need to go through all this difficult paths anymore like we can take it from here jump there and move forward so it's I find not fascinating right it's not newtonian linear anymore it's quantum yes. Yes, yes. So, um, so okay, then uh, what we will do now is uh, share our session that we had with Hathor, Isis, Lineage, and Mother Mary, who were sharing some messages about the golden age, right? New Earth, whatever people may call it. And also some messages for this week, if I remember correctly. Yes, for the world regression week. Right. Yeah. Yes. So it was lovely that we were. It doing was that. lovely to connect with you. It was lovely to have this session, and I'm sure sooner that it's the beginning of a beautiful partnership. <laughs> yes. yes, I think I think what came up was uh, to do some parenting guidance, yes. Yes. especially for these. Um, really enlightened children that are coming. Um, I even noticed it, you know, back when my kids were born in the 90s. And um, I even noticed it a lot when I was working with the preschools, that suddenly 50% um, of the children were getting diagnoses. Mm -hmm. And then I realized our system is outdated. We try to put them in a box and we don't right. understand that the problem is not the child is the box itself right exactly exactly so yes i look forward to doing some of this expanding this work together with you and supporting parents with these amazing children that are coming yes. i'm so excited to see the messages that will you know, come through as well yeah so okay. thank you so much so much thank you <laughs> have a right. wonderful day you all okay
Can you please tell me where you are? I am in the temple of my body. Beautiful. How does it feel like? Blissful. I saw the star of my being. The star of my being is the star of all beings. Oh, beautiful. Could you please elaborate on that? The Hathor speaks for the lineage and says that we are saturated in you. There are messages that come directly to the heart. And these are messages that you feel, you know, you take into yourself. Even though you cannot attribute words to them, it's almost like standing in sunlight and absorbing the rays of the sun. How do you put in words that experience of soaking in the sun? It is a feeling state, not a knowing. Mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a true knowing in your in your essence in your beingness in the thing that has no name but that you are and that's the thing that goes beyond every name that you would call yourself in in any timeline It's the outer time, the outer space. As Dolores Cannon spoke just a few days ago through Candace. It's the just is. And then you have the freedom as you incarnate into these physical expressions, into these physical temples, to create images and stories and lives, if you want to call them that. Very much like if you were a tourist going into a, a cathedral, a structure, you can say like the beautiful Sangria Familia in, in Barcelona. You enter it and experience your spirit experiences, see your sights. Take snapshots to put into your album and in that experience of that temple you always have your memory album to go back to or to bring forth in the present and you can go back and forth between the timeline and the outside of time. You do that all the time. It's the ability of your, your mind, you can call it, the ability of your knowingness. And you can visit many temples that way. As you create many different bodies. I as Hathor knew, know, 
as you know, how to enter into the core of beingness, to manifest in different bodies. And I became very aware of my earth incarnation and my serious incarnation at the same time. And even more incarnations than is recorded. And so that is what you do all the time. Yet you put so much focus into this earth incarnation and even gone beyond what is divine and going into the focus of objects outside of yourself, you're forgetting your divine. And yes, you've been in somewhat of a prison in this earth because you've, hmm, the right word, You've chosen to allow yourself to succumb to fear. The fear of those objects and things around yourself. The concepts such as government, as medicine, as right education. And when you put your focus in the fear even in the concept of doing the right thing, not making a mistake, you're throwing your focus outside of the divine of your being. And you think it's okay because the collective is doing this. You look at your neighbors and your friends and your peers, you see that they are worried about their bank accounts and getting to work on time and doing the right homework lesson, getting the grades of approval outside of yourself as if that is what makes you okay. It's a silly game. It's such a, oh, beyond silliness. It's cute to watch, but I see that it's painful to experience. Because we got attached to it. Yeah, because you lose the real, you lose touch with reality of who you truly are. And from a mother's perspective, it's cute to watch the creativity of the children. And watching them create your own suffering. Mm. We are connected, so we feel that suffering. Yet, we're just so proud of you being creators. And know that you will create your joy when you're finished pay playing with this suffering, disassociative game. It is an individual process, yet you're so connected that you're in, impacted by one another. There are those of you who have taken on the collective 
to correct the collective, and you do that through your individual self. And that's why many of you have said, oh, I thought I worked through that issue before, and why is it coming back? It's coming back because you have a track record of resolving it, and you're resolving it for the collective now. There is no differentiation between the individual and the whole, yet there is also an individual. Do you have a message from the Divine Mothers related to the times that we're currently experiencing? Yes, you're um, experiencing a upheaval, but I actually, let me just put it in the terms of uh, upheaval in the sandbox. Uh, like, like there are children, indigos, who have come to destroy the old structures. Just think of the sandbox. Perhaps you've built battlegrounds in the sandbox. And these children come and they run their fingers through them and destroy your battle fortresses and leave you maybe angry and and disappointed that your creations are destroyed. But once you're finished crying with tears, you come to realize the sand is still there. You can just build something new. And were you really happy with what you had built before? Did you enjoy battling and trying to destroy one another in conflict? This is the time to reflect upon what you've created, how it is brought you joy or dissatisfaction, and use your conscious creative abilities that are a technology of your heart to work disciplined with the energies of your heart, your higher self, your divineness. You may use many different names to access the truth of who you are. and to create greater beauty and joy. It starts with first appreciating the beauty and joy that Mother Earth, Gaia, has created for you. Thus, it's so important that you connect with her. Even if you are stuck in an apartment in a city, look up at her sky. Look at the trees, look at the house plants that you have. Even look at the people that are created of the substance of Mother Earth. Look at the food that you ingest and know this is the lifeblood of Mother Earth sustaining you in her womb. First observe and appreciate Gaia, Mother Earth, even in the cotton fabrics of your clothing. Feel her love and her vibrancy, her life in everything, in the wood, in the furniture that you sit upon. Feel her alive around you, like the placenta 
of a womb is alive, protecting the fetus, giving it the environment it needs to not only sustain its life, but to grow. Feel your mother's womb that you are living in. So beautiful. Thank you. Do you have a particular message for this week? The World Regression Week. You call it a week because <laughs> follow timelines. And it is celebrating Dolores Cannon, who is a wonderful, uh, let's say, doorway into a connection, like an opening to the veil, so that through her methods, and the methods that you've developed, and the methods that each one of you develop as you expand, and that is the true divinity, is expansion. You are um, awakening or are opening doorways of awakening for all of humanity. And yes, when you pull this experience into the third dimension timeline experience you devote focus under a week but this focus can be any moment in time on your timeline and it is forever in your awakened higher dimension state And I just want to add a note here that I am using the language that you are speaking, but these terms may not be permanent. You may have your own images and terms. You may hear the young children speak of things with their own terms that are really addressing what you're talking about in your upper dimensions, your awakenings. So there are no confinement to terms. Listen to your young children. They're awakened. They're here to help you with your awakening. They may even speak to you just from their eyes. Even a newborn can download gold and diamonds of divine light remembering if you are open to receive. Thank you, Hathor. If I may ask, you were mentioning that we didn't finish yet expanding this method. Would you like to elaborate on that a bit? Can you specify what method you were talking about? The, the QHHT, BQH, the hypnosis method. Oh, yes. That mm -hmm. is always expanding. As part of divinity, there's no end. It's always expanding. So what I would give as guidance is anytime you set some sort of limit or boundary on yourself, know you're following it, fall, fall falling into old patterns of the, the world that disassociates you from your divinity. 
So like with childlike wonder and I can't think, enthusiasm. Just follow your intuitions. And you do have your beautiful ego selves that kind of know the rules of this earthly life that sets the boundaries for what would keep you safe, let's say what would keep you in this embodiment, in this temple that you are in, so that you may fully explore all that you can explore in this temple experience you have now. So bless your beautiful ego that would stop you when you were inspired to run out, run out in front of that truck and see what would ex happen when your ego strikes that chord of fear that says, no, step not out into in front of that truck. Stay in this temple now and explore all that you can within the principles of this embodied earthly life. And that is the responsibility of parents with their divine children, is to keep them embodied, to keep them in their embodiment, and only be concerned about that safety while you give that boundary of staying in the embodiment you give them infinite freedom to create and to grow in the soul. You are their ego until it grows within them for them to understand how to thrive and keep the temple safe in this earthly life. Thank you, Hathor. Do you have a last message to convey? I never have a last message. Mm, okay, let us say um, a relevant message that we can close this session with for today. Focus on your breath. Your breath in and out of your heart as much as you can remember it. You may need to first give yourself a quiet space, be out in nature or in the quietness of your room. And if you have many, if you have small children, you might need, it might need to be in the bathroom with the door shut. To just tap into the breath going in and out of your heart. Bringing in the love. And as it exhales, you expand that love through your whole beingness. Let it radiate out into the environment around you. And then practice that breath while you're in company of others, even while you're speaking, even while you're in a busy situation, even while you're in the middle of doing tasks that you might have felt were unpleasant tasks. But as you breathe in through your heart and through your whole being, you will find bliss, in the putrid smells of your garbage, in the cleaning up of a sticky mess, in everything you do. 
breathing into your heart and through your heart is where you will find your bliss. And you may see the dew on the rose petals. Thank you. I do want to add this little piece here. Many times when people are asking questions, they want to know about the future. They want to know if they will get this or that, or if they make this or that decision, if it's the right thing, meaning will it make them happy? And that's another way you've been trained into disassociating with yourself. Being in the moment and appreciating what is there and what situation you're in and breathing in the love, the divine light is your peace and secure feeling. You're getting the knowledge you need when you need it. Why should you ask about something in the future? At least you forget it when you actually need it. You may ask for guidance in the now and listen in your heart as you say, well, if I choose this thing, how does that feel? And listen in your heart, does it feel contraction? Or does it feel expansion? And that will give you the answer. The only answer you need. If we're talking about the future, then would you like to elaborate a bit on some fears that people have about, you know, what has been spoken about, the three days of darkness, fears, of the 5G, so many fears, now fears of the virus, of course. Like again, always fear of something in the future. You are giving away your life, which is your now. Because you only have now, and it's the unfolding now that becomes the future that you're thinking about. So you may go through your calendar and look at 1984, 1990, 2000, 2012, 2016, 2019, 2020, April 12th, April 17th. And they are like writing down in your journal the, incur the occurrences that have happened. They are our history now. In future, while you have dates, you may plan a wedding on October 31st, 2020 and plan for that wedding. But it is what it is when it happens in that now. So by worrying about three days of darkness in this present moment, you're writing in your journal of today. Worry fear, darkness. And that's what your day today will be in history. While you have the choice to look outside at the sunshine, 
look at your children laughing and playing. And perhaps even write a poem in your journal of today. That will be your history. And even if you have days in your journal of fear and worry, people even have days in their journal of being abused, being tortured, being manipulated. You can flip back to those pages in your journal and draw beautiful flowers around it. Suns. And know that your divine self has always been present. And there were sunshine on those days. There were children laughing on those days. There were flowers on those days. You can paint over that page like an artist paints over a painting that they're not happy with. He uses the canvas for a new painting with new colors. Your future does not have pages yet. So how can you paint without a page? How can you create when there is no now? That is your canvas. Now is your canvas. So in this now, you can visualize with your imagination the sunlight, the happiness, even the things that make you happy. But do not be too tied into the things. Be more connected into the happiness, the feeling that you get, that you imagine you will get from those things because perhaps bigger and better and newer and things beyond your imagination will bring you that happiness. So you cannot paint a picture of your future without the page to paint it on, without the canvas. Paint on this page you have now, the journal of this day, your dreams, your gratitude for what is, and the expansion of your beauty and joy that is awaiting for you in the future. Unless you prefer to paint and experience fear, but you make the choice. Your heart knows. Thank you so much. I think we are slowly coming to an end. So if you would like to share something else, we would be happy to receive a closing message. I want to respect your timeline. So know that when you tap into your true essence, your eternalness, everything is there. All potential, all love. And we respect the timeline, so we shall close now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hathor. Thank you, Divine Mothers, for being with us, Thank guiding you. us, and reminding us that we are you. Yes. Thank you.